Hello, Holy Wiremod here. Welcome to tutorial 20 in the GLUA Pro series, where we're going to be taking a look at the base entity, and we're going to be creating a NPC out of that. So we're going to be doing some basic setup for an NPC, not so much every little detail of it. So let's start with the setup that we have. I have a NPC custom folder with pre-made files of init, seal, init, and shared. As you can see, they're all pre-set up with the add CSLUA file and includes just as standard. And also, we're going to be setting up the init.lua as such, so when we spawn our NPC custom, it's going to spawn about 300 units to the right. doesn't really matter. 300 is not significant, but this is what we're doing as well as giving us a shotgun. All right, so now we have the setup explained. Let's go into the meat of the tutorial where we're going to be going to game modes, base, entities, entities, and going to base AI, just like this. So you may notice that there's schedules and there's tasks. We're not going to go over this in this tutorial. We'll go into the next tutorial on how to set up these schedules and tasks. For now, we're just going to go over basic setups. So let's start with share.lua. As you can see, we can get our standard values that we always get. So we're going to have these. And so here we have, of course, we're going to have the name of the thing. So we're going to have custom NPC or NPC custom. Doesn't really matter. Just put some name there. We have the author. Then we're going to have service at email.com and the purpose is a tutorial and lastly instructions spawn me there we go automatic frame advance set to false and something we're going to be taking from shared underscore lua is we're going to take on remove so this is going to be called just before an entity is deleted we also have physics collide physics update set automatic frame advances and whatnot and the descriptions of what these do are in here but i'm just going to take on remove as an example to show you how to get that set up so let's just say that once it's removed we'll say self get class so npc custom in this case and we'll say has been removed there we go and that will print that to console all right so now that we have share.lua set up let's go into the client and for client it's very simple. We're simply going to be utilizing draw and draw translucent. So we're going to have this right here. So draw and draw translucent. And we can also set the render group, render group being opaque. We have enumerations on the wiki for render groups, which I can put in the, in the description below and a link. And let's go into here and just copy and paste that. All that's fine for our entity. So this just simply draws it. And I'll be showing you some nice tricks in a future tutorial with how to add, add some fancy text and all that stuff uh, as soon as we get to that tutorial. But until then, this is all you need for a CL underscore init. And lastly, we have to set up init.lua. This is the most important one. So let us then open up init.lua, bring that right into here. And you may notice that instead of just including shared, we also have schedules and tasks, which we'll go into like I said in the next tutorial. We have some variables, which are server side. And here we have the maxi all speed, which is going to be our turning speed for the entity. So 200 is a good standard one. And here we have the class, which we're just going to have uh, NPC, which is going to be class citizen rebel. OK, so some nice things that we can actually get from init Lua is we have on take damage, which has a class called damage info, which we'll go into in just a second. Uh, you start touch and in touch and all that. You know how to how all that works. Get relationship is pretty nice. We'll cover that, though I'm going to comment that out so our server doesn't crash. Um, well, mainly it's uh, get attack spread here, which we're also going to cover. You understand, think, and expression finish. That's not so important for what we're doing. All right, so let's start with initialize. So, of course, function int initialize, just like this. And instead of setting up a custom value on our int table, you remember last tutorial we did this, we had some value, and that uh, we're going to be doing that as such inside the function by putting self instead of int, and we're going to put nick, and this is going to be the name of our uh, seagull, which I'm going to be making. So let's say it's a seagull, supums the seagull. Got to have our soup in here. There we go. And next, we're going to set the model to a seagull model from Half-Life 2. And I have that copy and paste right there. Then we're going to set the hull type. So the hull type, I'm going to explain in more detail when we go over traces and line traces and hull traces and all that. Uh, for now, 
just know that the hull type is going to be of human and also that we're going to put a size of the hull as normal and there we go so that should look good around our seagull model now we can also set the initial state of the npc so the state is pretty much is it standing idle is it alert looking for an enemy uh, and there's a bunch of other enumerations which i'll have a link in the description below for that as well and then we have set solid of course are we able to walk through it like a ghost or will it actually block us from going through it so we'll set it as solid so we can't walk through it and if it happens to be spawned in the air we want it to drop to the floor or else that'd be kind of awkward unless that's how you want your npc to be then that works too so let's have set health and we're going to set it to modest 25 for the seagull and lastly and we're going to go into this in the more detail in the next tutorial we have capabilities add so capabilities add just like that and we have an enumeration for capabilities so i'm going to have a link for the enumerations there so we have ground you can also have fly you can have alert look around use and all this fun stuff or you can actually set one so it moves its head if it's a human which is really nice we'll go into that like i said in the next tutorial so don't focus too much on that just know that it's there all right so then we have int on take damage so here we have damage info so what's this damage info well it's actually another type of class so here we're going to have classes and then we have damage info which you can see see take damage info and we have add damage get attacker uh, get inflictor is it explosive damage is it bullet damage so different information about the damage in which the entity is receiving essentially and this stuff is very useful so let's make some custom code based upon our damage info so let's get the attacker and we'll say damage info get attacker and let's get the damage as such so we have damage info and this is going to be get damage then we're going to have set health. So here we're manually changing the health whenever the NPC takes damage. So it's going to be the current health minus the damage. And if the health is less than or equal to zero as such, and if the attacker is a player, then, and we're going to say, save remove entity to get rid of the entity, which is going to trigger uh, on remove right here so we'll see a message from that so we'll put self and then we'll print something else in the console just so I can show you that we're able to get attack information or damage information so we have the attackers nick which is going to be the name of the player killed self dot nick which we defined up here which is supums the seagull and then we are going to lastly return false which pretty much says, hey, we, we have our own method of setting up the damage, otherwise true, and then it'll permit the damage to go through as normal. So here, lastly, then we're going to have these last two functions, which are going to be get attacks. Uh, actually, let me put in first, then get attack spread. So then we're going to have the weapon and then the target. So pretty much what this does is it tells you uh, or tells the entity how accurate they're going to be when firing a certain weapon so we can get the class of a weapon and we can say hey if it's a weapon shotgun then we want a spread which a spread is going to be between 0 and 1 so we'll say 0.5 spread else for all other weapons and of course you wouldn't do this you'd have specific cases for other weapons if need be you put 0 0.1 so we're more accurate with 0 0.1 less spread Okay, so that's how you'd set up a spread. And lastly, I'm going to show you how to set up the relationship of an entity. So this is actually how you get entities to attack other entities as well as attack players as you set the relationship. So if the entity is a player, so we'll say for all players, we want our seagull to like it. So we have enumerations for this as well, which I have a link in the description below for um, these D enumerations as they're called else we're going to return that they're going to be neutral towards it okay so you also have fear you also have um, error and all this fun stuff and like i said um, for the sake of not crashing the server i'm just going to comment 
these two out because we don't really need to worry about attack spread as the seagull doesn't have a weapon and the relationship um, not necessary we're mainly focused on on take damage here so let me start the server up and I'll show you how everything comes together okay so we are in the server and here is Supum's seagull so I'm going to shoot him as you can see once the damage exceeds the 25 health he disappears or gets safe removed it says in the council up here I have killed Supum's seagull and NPC custom has been removed as according to the on removed and shared.lua. All right, so that's going to conclude the setup for the NPCs. Like I said, we're going to go into task and schedules in the next video. If you have any questions, of course, feel free to leave so in the comment section below. If you like the content, I'll like, subscribe, share, bell, and whatnot. And I will catch you guys in the next tutorial. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Don't forget to check out Hexane Networks for affordable and high-performance server hosting. That's Hexane Networks, whose link is in the description below.